Welcome to a YouTube list video. The algorithm favors these very much. You guys love a list. I've curated a list for you. Over the years, I've reviewed and handled and owned all of these watches. These are watches which I recommend, which are great value, fantastic fun, a lot of them iconic, for less than 60 pounds. That is not too much money for what is gonna get you a really nice watch. Sometimes you can buy two of the watches in this list for that amount of money. So let's get on with it. I'm gonna get this list rolling with one of my favorites of all time of watches, less than 60, actually less than 30 pounds. That is gonna be the Loris Lumibrite. This is a gorgeous little field watch. One of my most popular videos over the years. I adore this watch for many reasons. It's lightweight, it's small, it's thin, it's wearable. You can mod it, you can change that mineral crystal to a sapphire if you want to. I've actually done it to the titanium version, which is coming up in the list next, by the way. Going back to the major thing which makes this watch bloody amazing is that full loom dial. Amazing, really good. It glows like a torch. It's so much fun. Fun, iconic, it's a field watch, it's wearable, it's light, it's cheap. What more could you ask for from an everyday wear watch? Absolutely incredible. One of my favorite watches of all time to get this watch list going. So another Loris, I adore this brand for their field style watches. And that is because they are so simple, but done so well. The titanium version is gloriously lightweight. I did a mod video and that was for a 50 pound watch. You can get them for more or less. I found ones from Rubicon watches for about 50 pounds. They're discounted down. This is with the bracelet. They've got different dial color options, which is really, really good. Again, you can change it to a double dome sapphire crystal for not much more money. Link in the description to the video, etc. Or just go and subscribe and go and fly in the playlist for mods, etc. That's probably the easiest thing to do. And you're going to get to see a watch which is under 60. Great specification. Not many flaws with this kind of watch. I just think it's fantastic. It's an all-round, everyday piece. 100 meters water resist. You can't go wrong. Next up is what is probably the cheapest watch of the entire list. Actually, it is when looking. I got mine for £17, but as you can see from this screenshot, from the same store I bought mine from, but the price has dropped to just over 10 pounds. That is ridiculous. I would say even 17 pounds is an extremely reasonable price, but for the money, you get Cartier looks for cinema ticket money, and that is ridiculous. I just think for a bit of fun, which is what this is gonna be, a dressy watch you might throw on now and then, and not really care about the brand name and how much it actually costs, you can't go wrong. It's plated brass case, mineral crystal, a one pound quartz movement in there. Who cares? It looks pretty. Mine I've had for a while now and it's still keeping amazing time. It's reliable. You don't care about it because it's so cheap. It's a bit of a strap monster so you can change it out. It looks great. I've got mine on a Milanese mesh and it just looks great on this. It pairs up beautifully with this watch. Thin watch, thin strap, but it goes beautifully with a leather, even a rubber strap. It's so much fun for this money. I would say it's a no brainer for your collection. Just go and get one. It's stupidly fun. If you like rectangular watches, of course. Next up, an icon. I've owned probably three and I've seen four or five. I've borrowed from friends just to do reviews of, etc. I keep coming back to these and I think I'm gonna get another one because they are incredible value for money. It's the Casio Aduro MDV 106 or variations because of the different colorways you can get. I like just the bog standard classic black and silver one. Really good for 50 pounds. I buy mine from either Amazon when they're on offer or from Great Watches as a website. The link will be in the description. No affiliation, by the way. I just think they're great. Amazing value for money. As watches go, they are iconic. Everyone talks about, oh yes, Bill Gates had one. I don't care about Bill Gates. Um, I just like the fact that this watch has such an amazing specification for beta capability. It's tough, it's rugged, you can take it on holiday, you can change the straps out. So many people buy these knowing they can just rely on it. It looks good. It's Yes, it does have a few flaws, like the strap is a bit stiff and a bit ugly, mineral crystal. The loom is actually poor for a dive watch. The date window is microscopic, etc., etc. But you know what? You can mod these and that's what I've done. You can change the bezels out. There's a few available out there you can change, but the main thing people, a lot of people do to stop it scratching up too much, change the crystal or and the strap. I did a very popular mod video of how to do that. It's really straightforward with a few bits you can buy off of Amazon just to change crystal and things like that. It's surprisingly fun and easy, great fun to own and it's iconic, no brainer. 
Next up, a watch I gave away very recently. Congrats to the winner, by the way. It's the Addy's Dive, homage to a Willard, but it has a beautiful dial, which looks like the bottom of the ocean. It's silver, it's grainy texture, very good loom, slightly stiff bezel action, and a bracelet which can be upgraded for about four to five pounds with a milled clasp if you want to, or it's easy to swap out with its 20 mil lug width to rubber straps or leather even. Very versatile colorway. Cushion case, very comfortable. It's a fun all-round watch. I know the screenshot I've shown here is it's about 70 pounds, but they I've seen it twice within three or four months being less than 50 pounds, let alone 60. The current price today, it's just over 70, but do keep an eye. And what I'm getting at with this list is, do keep an eye out on prices, because prices fluctuate on every watch I'm mentioning today. Do keep an eye out, and don't tell me off if you find it and it's more than 50 or 60 pounds, because like I said, it does change the listen next up is a bit of a joke i bought this watch for 135 pounds i'm sorry it's over the 60 pounds i said but guess what someone out there is wearing that exact watch which was in as new condition and you know what they paid for it 50 pounds yes i saw it on ebay people just don't want used accurists it took me three months to sell it on ebay three months and on average, if I sell a watch, you know, to keep my collection manageable and I'm not horrifically in debt and broke, I do shift my watches, even the cheap ones, just to top up the old kitty a bit so I can keep going in life. And this Accurist, I thought, I bought it for 135, it was 180, I thought I'll sell it for about 100 because it's barely used. No one wanted it for 70. No one wanted it for 80, 90, 100. I had to drop below 60 for it to even be considered. So some lucky so-and-so out there got this Beautiful watch with an amazing specification, 50 quid. So keep an eye on eBay for poor suckers like me that have to just let something go because they're not willing to wait the rest of time to sell a watch. So some lucky sod has got it. Well done you, enjoy it because it's a fabulous watch. And I didn't want to give it away because I was stubborn. And I also wanted to tell this story to see how long it actually takes to sell a bleeding accurist on eBay. So now you know it's over three months. Moving on to what is fluctuating between 30 and 50 pounds is a Seconda Diver, a competitor, if you will, to the Casio Duro I previously mentioned. I love this watch because this exact model, the 1846, I think it is, uh, it's very pretty. It just looks gorgeous. Change the strap out, but I love the black and the gold details with the orange in there as well. Same specification, identical specification, if you will, to the Casio, and actually more affordable. Very similar wearability and size, etc. It's a no-brainer if you want something which looks really good. It's got Amiga-esque style to it for comfortably under the £60 I've said in this video. So that is a really great watch for it being a minimalistic, simple, pretty thing that's a beater that you don't have to worry about. Bit of a sloppy bezel action, a bit springy and a bit bouncy. But the rest of it just works so well. The loom is crap. Who cares? It's a cheap watch. You're going to love it. Now, next on the list is a Casio. I've got a few Casios on this list because Casios are like the gods of affordable, iconic watches. And for me, one of the most iconic Casios is the G-Shock, the DW5600, you can still buy today. And I've bought a number of them. And the one which is the best for me is the OG, if you will, or the most current iteration as closely linked aesthetically and specification-wise to the very original one. And that's the 5600. Very rugged, it's very affordable. That's where we like this uh, part of the equation. It's less than 60 pounds, and I paid less than that for mine. You can get them for a bit more with the multiband six and solar power and all that stuff, which is obviously awesome, but I'm a bit of a purist sometimes, and I like the original. And they hold the value really well. I owned it for a while and I sold it for not much less than I bought it for. So Casio sometimes are actually quite good for holding their value even though the watches are readily available, which is really weird. I love this watch because it's a go anywhere, do anything beta. Yes, it's a rugged resin, slightly cheap feeling watch sometimes, but it just does everything that it should so very well. You won't go wrong with one of these bad boys. And when there's a zombie apocalypse one day, which probably will be, this would be the watch you can take out zombies with. <laughs> now moving on to some homage watches from AliExpress, the escapement time watches. I have had so many of these because they are always, I've never paid more, than 60 pounds for this escapement time homage to a King Seiko. Why do I love it? Very well made. It's got a Seiko VH movement. Was it VK? Seiko Mecha Quartz movement, so it has four ticks a second, so it's got that sort of slight charm to it, slightly different to your usual individual ticking seconds, so it has something a bit unique about it. Sapphire crystal, pretty looks, 
well machined cases. The leather straps are actually very good quality. 20 mil lug width on most of these means it's a strap monster, so you can wear it day in, day out. They have screw down crowns, they're versatile, you can get it wet and not worry about it. What could you ask for? If you want something as classic, everyday dress, formal watch or smart casual, this is a no brainer. Another Casio in the collections is the iconic watch that Marty McFly wore. I adore these watches. I had the more of a modern reissue version. It's the calculator watch. Very 80s, very cool, really awkward to use, but they look fun. They've just got some street cred about them because it's a bit of charm from the past that you can still buy today to this day for less than £30. I really love it. It's just really cool. It's a bit clunky to use. It looks a bit funny. It, is, it feels like a cheap watch. And what's more nerdy than saying you have a calculator on your wrist, even though most of the time we don't need to do that. It's just something fun and silly. And that's what watch collecting is. Sometimes it's just something to be fun and silly. I think I've got a really nice rounded collection here for you guys of watches that you can cherry pick what you want from this. From my experience, one of the most iconic of all these watches for the AliExpress scene, if you will, is the Pagani Design 1644 Chronograph Sport Watch. Obviously it pays strong homage to a very popular watch made by a Swiss super giant, but that's where the similarities end. Obviously aesthetically it's very similar, but inside is a lovely Seiko Mecha Quartz movement, with lovely snapback action, multiple ticks for when you're timing things with the chronograph, beautiful looks, sapphire crystal. I'm not sure about the case if it's plated uh, brass or if it's steel or not, but I think it's stainless steel. But nearly always less than 60 pounds. I've never personally bought one for more. I've had a few and they are just such a strap monster. You can wear it in the sea. I've had mine in the sea when I recorded my first ever review of this watch. I wore it on a a watch gecko strap and I literally swam in the sea with it and it was perfect no problems all the screw down elements it works as it should it's a beta watch that looks expensive you can't go wrong fabulous value for money brilliant never had a bad one of this model really cool three more watches to go guys and the first of those three is the Casio AE 1000 as you can see from my screenshot I bought this on Amazon nigh on 10 years ago this is before I started my family and bought a house and, and settled down in life, I went on a lovely epic adventure for seven weeks. I saved up really hard and did a bit of an American East Coast road trip, train trip, driving, you name it, from effectively New York. Um, it was no, we started in Canada, then we went to New York, and then we went through all of Florida, driving and trains, and ended up at Key West. And that's where we finished seven weeks later. And we went around the Smoky Mountains, did all that. And what was the watch I wore during that entire experience? It was this watch, the AE-1000. But the main thing that was useful was the day before we were going on this seven week trip, you can imagine the anxiety of everything being okay. I had a haircut. I thought I have a pre-travel haircut. And I managed to get a hair from my haircut, a tiny one, stuck between my contact lens and my eyeball. And I ended up with an ulcer on my eyeball. And yes, it's as painful as it sounds, it was horrific, but this was like the day before. I waited six hours in accident and emergency because of the pain was of absolutely agony. And I thought, I can't cancel this trip. I'm not delaying it. Long story short, I got some incredible eye drops. I had to, for the entire night before going on the holiday, put eye drops in my eye every hour, on the hour. So luckily for me, my watch, which I just bought for less than 30 pounds, had five alarms. So I effectively preset all my alarms. This is before I had a fancy phone which I could work out all the alarms on it. And I basically used that watch and its alarms to get me through the night. So I managed to do my eye drops and it went away. So this watch effectively was my little assistant with making sure I took my medicine on time to enjoy an incredible adventure which I wore this watch. I sadly, because it was 10 years ago, I beat the hell out of this watch and ended up dying a death because um, I wore it when I used to work outdoors and I basically ruined it. So I'm sad that I don't have that watch anymore, but what an incredible watch for that kind of money. Next up for, again, ridiculous money, a Casio, the A158. You can get the 168, which is a bit bigger. The A158 is a beautiful watch. It's like the bling version of the F91W, the classic iconic watch. And it's got a bit of retro snazzy charm to it. It's got that bling factor for not much money. And it just, it looks so cool. It looks like you're trying a bit, but you're a bit, you know, I'm cool. I've got a basic Casio, but also want to be noticed that I'm wearing this cool retro watch. So it's very shiny. And I like that. It's good fun. And it's a bit of a retro bling to add to the collection. 
Last watch which I have owned, not the longest, but is the watch that got me back into doing watches again properly. It's actually a very, very important watch. One that I'm glad you stuck to the end of this video to see. And that is this. Yes, I bought this for about £24. Again, they fluctuate in price. This is a Timex Expedition Camper. And camping is about generally as extreme as my adventures go. And I'm also a bit camp sometimes. So it suits me in every way possible. I've worn this at centre parks in the River Rapids and no water went in. I've worn this in the sea. I used to wear this when I worked a far more laborious job and it got battered and scratched. Polished the crystal so it literally looks new again because it's acrylic. I changed the battery twice in it. It's a stonking great CR20 something battery. It's huge, it's like the size. But it's about that big, the battery. So tiny tiny crown tiny and and it's got weird skinny little hands and the ticking is really loud but it's rugged as hell it does what it says on the tin it's a tough watch resin case you can't go wrong with one of these actually and it's fun and it just looks cool it looks like a really really cheap hamilton if i can say that i don't care maybe it does but those i recommend it because it's just proper beta watch for not much money and if you want something with that kind of look go for it so here we are we're at the end of my huge 15 watch list do check out some of my other videos i've got playlists if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe it's so easy but watch my other videos that's the most important thing to grow a channel watch my videos here is some more go and have a look be good to see you come along for the ride bye for now